Welcome to the complete Ultimate GED math course from ultimategd.com. The purpose of this course is to start you from scratch and give you everything you need to pass the GED test with ease. We've helped a lot of people pass and we are 100% sure we can help you pass. All you need to do is watch all the videos in this course and be engaged in the comments section. Ask questions and answer questions. We are going to cover everything. For every topic we cover here, we will put a link in the description to ultimateged.com where you can get more examples. Okay, let's dive in. We are starting with the introduction to numbers. Question one, the number two is, here we are supposed to select all that applies. To get this right, we need to know the kind of numbers. Counting our natural numbers are the numbers we count. So we have one, two, three, four, and so on. When you add zero to these numbers, we have whole numbers. So whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. When we add negatives, we have integers. We have zero, one, two, three, and so on, and we can add negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on to get our integers. When you add fractions to integers, then you have rational numbers. So we have negative two, negative three over two, negative one, zero, one over two, one, five over four, two, and so on, our rational numbers. We'll take a deeper dive into rational numbers with the next question. Let's just use this information for now. Okay, so looking at this, you'll notice that once a number is in a lower level, it means it's in all the levels above it. If a number is here, then it will automatically be here and here. For our question, we can say that two is a counting or natural number. Check. Two is a whole number, check. Two is an integer, check. And two is a rational number, check. So we have our answer. Let's try negative five. See if you can do it yourself. Negative five is not a natural number because natural numbers are one, two, three, and so on. Negative five is not a whole number because whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, and so on. Negative five is an integer. We know that negative counting numbers are integers and negative five is a rational number. Let's try a more tricky question. If X is a positive integer, then X is also, please try this and leave your answer in the comments section. You can visit ultimateged.com for the solution and more examples if you are interested. Let's look at question two. How many elements of the set zero, negative one, pi, negative four over seven, square root of two are rational numbers? A rational number is the ratio of two integers. We know our integers are positive counting numbers, one, two, three, and so on, and negative counting numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on, and zero. So if we take any of the numbers over another number, we have a rational number. So negative two over three is rational. Five over seven is also rational. So four over one is also rational. Note that any number over one is the same number. So four over one can simply be written as four. Please note that for a rational number, the denominator or number at the bottom cannot be zero. Although we said you can pick any two integers. So example, eight over zero is not a rational number. It is undefined. 
Please note this as the exception. But the top, our numerator, can be zero. So zero over eight is a rational number. I'll post a video on Ultimate GED for those who want to learn more on the concept of one and zero in math. It's definitely something that will help you in math. Moving on, irrational basically means not rational. You cannot write it as a ratio of two integers. The most common irrational numbers you'll find on the GED are pi, square root of two, and square root of three. Let's look at our question now. So zero is a rational number. We know we can write zero as zero over eight, or zero over one, or zero over 1,000. Zero over any number is zero. Negative one is also a rational number. We can write it as negative one over one. Pi is an irrational number, as we just learned here. We will explain that more in later lessons, but please take note of it. Negative four over seven is a rational number. It is an integer. Negative four over another integer, seven. Square root of two is an irrational number. So we can say that three of the elements are rational. When dealing with fractions or integers, it's easy to tell that a number is rational. But when dealing with decimals, it becomes quite confusing if you don't know what you're looking for. In this question, we are supposed to find the number that is irrational. For decimals, we look at an irrational number as a number that has non-repeating and non-terminating decimals. Therefore, for a rational number, the decimals must either repeat like 0 0.22222, repeating. We use these dots to show that the number continues. Here, the two repeats are the decimals must terminate. Example, 7.35. There are no more numbers after the three, five. No dots to show that it continues. So for multiple choice A, we can see that the three is repeating, so it is a rational number. This decimal is actually the same as one over three. You can check it out on your calculator, one divided by three. For choice B, also, we can see that we have two seven, two seven, two seven. The two seven is repeating, so it is a rational number. Same here. This one has one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. The one, two, three is repeating, so it is a rational number. For the last one, when we look at the decimals, we have 414-2356 and so on. The numbers are not repeating in any orderly form, so we say it's non-repeating. Also, the numbers continue, so we say it's non-terminating. We can therefore say that the 1.414-21356 and so on is a irrational number. This is actually the same as square root of two which we already know from the previous question to be irrational. Try it on your calculator, square root of two. So this is our answer. Please note that the calculator will give you to a certain number of decimal places. So some calculators will show 0 0.333, others will show 0 0.33333, and others will show something different based on the number of decimal places. The dots are not shown. Please note also that usually, unless you are being tested on your ability to know rational and irrational numbers, most GED questions write all irrational numbers in an approximated form, making it look like a rational number. Example, although pi is an irrational number, 3.14159265.3, and so on, on the GED, you are told to use 3.14, making it look like a rational number, although 
it's actually irrational. Let's end this video here. Please share this video to help a friend and most important, subscribe to our channel and watch all the videos in this course. We will cover everything. You will become a master at this and easily pass your GED and say a permanent goodbye to your math problems. Have a great day and see you in the next video.